Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Foxborough's annual Veterans Day celebration. My name is Scott Blake. I am proud to be your veteran service officer. While I'm relatively new in town, I think this production really captures the best qualities of Foxborough and packages them together for a great presentation. I would like to start by welcoming Foxborough Fire Department Honor Guard to post the colors. Could you all please stand if you can? I would like to invite the Director of Human Services, Mr. Mark Craig, to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Please remain standing for the national anthem. It will be performed by Foxborough High School student Emma Lavery. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red flag was still there oh say does that star spangled then yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Thank you, Emma. Beautiful, beautiful job. At this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Steve Baker from... Oh, we don't have Steve, right? At this time, I'm going to uh, bring up Pastor Bill Dudley for our opening prayer. 
Good morning, Foxborough. Pastor Baker is sick in bed on antibiotics, but let's ask God's blessing on our veterans, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you that you are present with us. Thank you that you have blessed our community in so many ways. Thank you for our veterans who have served with courage, dignity, loyalty, and through them, you have preserved the freedoms that you have blessed us with. Bless our veterans today as we remember and honor their service and their sacrifice. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. At this time, please welcome American Legion Commander Edward Butler to the stage. Commander Butler will be reading Governor Haley's official Veteran Day proclamation. Good morning. The proclamation from the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Maura T. Healy. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's earliest days, thousands of men and women who have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty, and whereas, on November 11th, 1918, after four years of conflict, their armistice was signed in the forest of Comampier by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I the war to end all wars. And whereas in November 2023, the world will commemorate the 105th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. And whereas there are approximately 300,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the greatest sacrifices and contributions of our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations we honor, patriotism and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the brave, bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And now, therefore, I, Maura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do here, hereby proclaim November 11th, 2023, to be Veterans Day. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. At this time, I'm gonna invite Pastor Bill Dudley back to deliver the keynote address, a celebration of life of our beloved historian and U.S. Army veteran, Jack Othelette. Before I do speak about Jack, I want to mention two things regarding World War II veterans. We have had three left in Foxborough. We now have two, and one is with us today. Mr. Jack Grace is sitting near his son, the police chief. Could we take this opportunity to show Mr. Grace how grateful we are for what his generation has done? We're honored to have many of our veterans here today, but sir, we thank you and the greatest generation for your service. 
We also have Roger DiMarzio, who is still alive in Foxborough, but we lost Mr. Charlie Bridgham, World War II, a few days ago. Could we have a moment of silence in his honor? Thank you. An elderly female veteran of World War II, where she was a wave and Korea, who dedicated the 1940s through 70s to helping veterans heal as a physical therapist in West Roxbury, was 89 years old and living at the Doolittle home here in Foxborough. And she began insisting that she needed to report to the Navy base in Newport. She wouldn't stop insisting that she was active duty. The Doolittle called her nephew to come and convince her. He pointed out that she was now walking with a walker. It had no effect. She insisted her commanding officer would be looking for her. A local town father stepped in, obtained a certificate of thanks, did a recap, held a ceremony and did a recap of her Navy career then presented her with a certificate of thanks from the President of the United States. The elder, elderly Navy veteran then accepted that she was again retired. Peace was restored at the Doolittle. <laughs> thanks to the man she so respected, Mr. Jack Othelet. I know because I was the nephew who tried to convince her and failed until in stepped a man she loved and respected, Jack Othelet. John Pendleton Othelet was born on September 26, 1932, on Baker Street in Foxborough. His dad, Emil, was a machinist. His mom, Ruth, took care of Jack's older siblings, Harry, Mary, and Emil. They were a close family, and Jack intentionally remained close with his siblings all the days of his life. He had many friends in Foxborough attending Foxborough schools, including his good longtime friend Charlie McAllister, who's in the front row to your left and my right. It was with Charlie and another friend that on a lark, Jack took a typing class in high school taught by Mrs. Sullivan. In the seventh grade, Jack was sitting in a classroom when he saw an angelic vision into the room walked the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. Her name was Marjorie McKay. She had attended the outlying Quaker Hill School the first six years of her schooling. Jack got to know her. They eventually went on a date bowling. Margie beat Jack. Jack didn't care. They were an item all the way through high school, class of 1950. President Truman had an unexpected phone call while home in Independence, Missouri on a Saturday night. He was told the communists had invaded Korea. U.S. troops were under attack. The Korean War had begun. In Foxborough, as these events overtook a generation of young people soon to face the draft, Margie McKay told Jack Othelet, I'd rather be your widow than your ex fiance Jack walked into a field across from Sunlight Farm and obtained permission from Albert and then Frida back in the kitchen to marry Margie. They were married on November 29, 1952 at Bethany Church by Reverend Paul Malicote. They went to Virginia for a honeymoon where they visited Earl Ferguson and his wife Talia who had also just been married. When they got back, Jack's draft notice was waiting. And like the greatest generation before them, Jack and Margie were another young couple, as many were in Foxborough and across the nation, facing a war. Jack enlisted in the US Army. January 12, 1953, he was inducted at Fort Dawes, Massachusetts, five days after President Truman announced the development of the hydrogen bomb eight days before General Eisenhower was sworn in as president. 
Fort Dawes was a World War II artillery base on Deer Island in Winthrop at the northern curve of Boston Harbor. It wasn't long before his unit received word they were shipping out to Korea, but then Foxborough and maybe a higher power intervened. Remember that typing class that Charlie and Jack took with Mrs. Sullivan? I believe, if my research is accurate, on May 12, 1953, an officer came into mess hall and called for attention. He had a question, do any of you know how to type? Jack put up his hand, come with me, he was told, and he was put to work as a company clerk doing administrative duty, and he was kept stateside as his unit left for Korea. That worked out well for a man married six months at this point into what would be a 65-year marriage with Margie. Jack told me about the night that an unidentified aircraft began circling Boston. The whole east coast of the U.S. was put on high alert. The circling aircraft would not respond to radio contact or identify itself. Finally, someone walked up and looked at the radar wand going around and around, and there was a pigeon sitting on it. <laughs> they scared it away, and the mystery plane was gone. Jack served at Fort Devens. He achieved corporal status. He worked for the Army Security Agency with the Army Air Defense Command. Jack was honorary, honorably discharged at Fort Devens on January 11, 1955. He was given a bus ticket to Walpole where he re-enlisted in civilian life. Jack was a very private and humble man and he never told many people but he was embarrassed to have stayed stateside while his unit went to face enemy fire in Korea, an hour from home, able to visit Marge whenever he could, safe. He knew these were rare luxuries. Commander Finn of our American Legion said to me once, credit every man and woman who served with respect. Wherever they are, they are following orders. They are ready. They are willing to go when called. Jack needed carry no shame. He served, he followed orders. He was sacrificial in not seeking a deferment when he could have as a newly married man. There were many aspects to Jack's service to Foxborough that we could reflect on and countless stories we could tell. 18 years as editor of Foxborough Reporter, his fellow townspeople forming opinions by asking, what does Jack think, meaning his editorials. He went on to lead the New England Press Association. He met every president from Carter through Bush 43 he had a laugh when in line waiting to meet President Clinton. His grandson, JP, said, I hope this is quick. I'd like to swim in the pool at the motel before it closes. <laughs> Jack wrote our state criminal offender record inquiry law and worked with the legislature until they passed it. Jack and Jerry Rodman began Foxborough Discretionary Fund, which has helped countless individuals and families in need in our community. Jack with A.J. Dooley started Foxborough Cleanup Day. I'm old enough to remember in the 1970s when Jack single-handedly led the effort to restore the fence around the common. He raised money to restore it and enlisted Archie Hanna to make the molds to cast the new fence that we have today. Jack helped raise money for our flagpole in the center of Foxborough. We dedicated it on Flag Day 2015. We sang Happy Birthday to Marge that day. Jack was an endless promoter of the town of Foxborough. He loved our town. He loved that we care about each other. He and Margie once traveled to India for the Press Association so Jack could do talks on community newspapers. Margie got quite sick and was hospitalized while they were in India. 
The doctor came in the room one time and said, where are you folks from? Jack said, the US. What state, asked the doctor? Massachusetts. What town? Foxborough. The doctor said, I used to go to the racetrack there and then eat dinner at the Lafayette house. <laughs> Jack pulled out a Foxborough pen from his briefcase, handed it to the doctor, and said, come visit us again sometime. It was Jack who did research for us. He taught us about our families. He taught us about our buildings, our history, the great events of our past and present. He moved our hearts and brought us together with a sense of community. He told us we can be proud of being a small town with global impact when Ben and Rex Bristol went to China among the first Americans there in the 70s and built a Foxborough Company facility there. When the Patriots came to town, we were proud again, and he became friends with Robert Kraft. He and Marge really liked Myra. And Jack remembered our veterans. He pushed for the 29 memorial markers that we have around town, marking 29 people who paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom that we enjoy today. Every marker, by the way, is near the home where they grew up in Foxborough. I remember when Veterans Day had fallen to a brief ceremony of maybe 30 people in a room at the Legion. Jack stepped in, reorganized it, got friends involved, brought the community together, and made us proud. And about 25 years ago, we had to move to the high school auditorium because it had grown. He wrote about those who served in the Civil War. He told us about Jabez Davidson. If you go into Rock Hill Cemetery past the chapel and continue to, on the main drive down the hill, look to your left at the stones and you'll see Jabez Davidson who guarded a guy named Abraham Lincoln at a place called Gettysburg for the Gettysburg Address. And at 90 years of age, climbed a ladder to the top of Memorial Hall to check on the condition of the Civil War soldier on top. Did you know the Civil War soldier is made of wood? Jack met with dozens of our greatest generation or their families to write down and preserve their stories forever. Like that of Clinton Davison, who was in a bomber flying over Germany and France and was shot down over France. Clinton went missing in action and his family anxiously waited to hear whether he was alive or lost forever. His English fiance, Glennie, deeply in love, left England and moved to Foxborough to be with Clinton's family. She always left flowers at her church, St. Mark's on South Street, on the altar in his memory over the years. That's how the rector knew his name. And Reverend Louis Pitt was walking in a cemetery in France when he saw a stone for Clinton Davison. The mystery was solved where he had been laid to rest. And at last, Glennie knew her fiancé had died in that crash. In her final years, Glennie lived at the Doolittle home under the care of its president, Jack Othelette. Every night, the last face Glennie saw was in an old photo of a man in uniform as she kissed goodnight her fiancé, Clinton Davison. We're grateful today for an Army vet who never stopped serving like many of our veterans, continuing to serve in the community, his beloved family, some of whom are here today, his daughters, his dear sons-in-law, 10 grandchildren, now 11 great-grandchildren. His service to Foxborough was immense, and I've barely scratched the service surface. His respect for all our veterans is to be emulated as we thank you today for your service. Jack died still working on a way to honor our Spanish-American War veterans. He said they had been overlooked. He wanted to make that right. Jack became very prayerful and reverent in his final years especially, so I'd like to use his favorite expression 
to say, to say thank you from my friend Jack and from our town for all of you who have served. Thank you, Jesus, for your service. And now to honor and remember Jack, our Foxborough serenaders will now sing one of Jack's favorite songs, Foxborough, My Hometown. Thank you very much. That was great. At this time, I'd like to bring up Veteran Service Administrative Assistant, Lauren Burrill, who's going to read a poem written by Foxborough resident, Harriet Rounds. They stand so straight and tall, these men of women who gave their all. I was proud to shake their hands, to thank them for protecting our land. Although I am sorry they have to carry a gun, I'm still proud of each and every one. The Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines are the most dedicated people I've ever seen. To be able to thank you, our country's great treasure, truly gives me a pleasure. Because of you, our country is alive, and without you, we could not survive. So I want to thank each and every one of you for your sacrifices and all that you do. Because we all know it's true. Without you, there would be no red, white, and blue. Thank you, Lauren. Next, I would like to welcome up uh, JC's Community Development Vice President, Amy Labrache, to the stage. She will introduce the winners of the essay contest held at the Ahern Middle School. Amy. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. 
My name is Amy Labrache, and I am the Community Development Vice President for the Foxborough JCs. Part of my job on the board is to look for opportunities to create partnerships and create projects that support everyone in this community. With the support of the American Legion Post 93 and the Foxborough Veteran Services, we were able to hold an essay contest at the Ahern School, and we were just blown away with the creativity, thoughtfulness of these kiddos. I'm so excited to be here today to share some of the incredible middle school essays and projects. So first I'd like to call up Sarah Lyons and Brendan Warrens for their essay. Okay. <clears throat> um, Brendan and I have created a poem today to express our gratitude for our veterans all around the world. In the stillness of a quiet morning, as the sun breaks through, through the horizon, casting a warm and gentle light upon the world, it's a reminder of the unwavering strength and resilience that veterans like ours have shown throughout their service to their country. Dear veterans, You've walked paths most will never know, shouldered burdens that only a few can comprehend, and stood brave in the face of adversity. You faced the darkest of nights and the harshest of storms, but through it all, you've persevered with honor and dedication. Every step you took, every sacrifice you made, was a testament to your unwavering commitment and to the values you held dear. You stood shoulder to shoulder with your comrades, forming bonds that are unbreakable not even after death. Your service was not just a job, it was a calling, a duty to protect the freedoms held so dear. And to those who are only with us spiritually, those whom also fought so bravely yet don't get to see your impact or the moon rise and sun fall, I hope the view is better in the sky where you can finally rest with tranquility. Because now, when you look back on your journey, know that your sacrifices were not in vain. Your dedication, courage, and love for your country have made a profound difference. Your legacy lives on in the hearts of those you've touched, in the freedoms you defended, and in the grateful nation that will forever, forever be in debt to you. In the embrace of your loved ones, alive or reborn, in the simple joys of everyday life, and in the beauty of this world, may you find the peace and happiness you so rightfully deserve. The nation you served is grateful for your sacrifice, now and eternally more. Thank you for your service, your strength, and your unwavering love for this country. Thank you, veterans. And please welcome seventh grader Olivia Fiscaldo. The definition of a veteran is a person who has served in the military. My definition of a veteran is a person who has devoted their life to fight, serve, and protect our country. We think of Veterans Day as a day off from school or work. I've been guilty of this myself. But as I get older, I realize Veterans Day is a day we're supposed to think about our family and friends who have served in the military. It also makes me think about how veterans and their families feel when they miss an important holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas. They could have been away fighting to protect us. Without veterans, I wouldn't have the freedom to go to school or play basketball, and I couldn't get to live through all the amazing experiences I have been able to live through. On Veterans Day, we should all show gratitude to our veterans because they protect and fight for us, even at some at the age of 17, 18, and 19, usually right before you would go to college. When you think about it for a minute, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but really, it's the hardest job in the world. Each Veterans Day, I'm going to think more about what these heroes have done for our country, and you should too. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Beckett Ruggles, fifth grade. Here you go, Lovey. Thank you. Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine, scary stuff you must have seen. Thanks so much for what you do. I wish I was as brave as you. Sail the seas, fly through the air. You serve, protect, and really care. You sacrificed and risked your life, battling through pain and strife. 
Freedom you spread and protect, for that you deserve much respect. We celebrate on Veterans Day, taking this chance to kindly say, with grateful hearts we honor you. Thanks for serving the red, white, and blue. Next, I'd like to call up Arna Patel and Lexi Eisenhower. What Veterans Day means to us. Have you ever wondered what a veteran's purpose and what it means to other people? Well, in this journey of the history of the USA, you will find out what Veterans Day means to us. When someone is going to war for us, it's a really big deal because they risk their lives and separate from their loved ones to go to war for their country. Also, the treatment can be harsh and they get very less food and water. We, so we must respect them. So here, we will be showing you what Veterans Day means to us. <coughs> My great-grandfather was a pilot for C-47 planes two years after World War II. He served in Germany for two years and in the USA for three years. He served in North Dakota, New York, Washington, and Arizona, three years in each. Altogether, he spent 23 years in the Air Force. I was really happy to find out that my great-grandfather was a veteran. That's really important to me because the only reason I'm alive is because of our loyal and considerate veterans. Also, having a veteran in my life and, to other, and other Samaritans, too, is a nice thing. And it's very important to appreciate them and respect them for all the work they do, not just for us, but for the whole United States. While we're at home in our cozy chairs, there are veterans out there fighting for us. Even though you might not be able to see these protective people, either they passed on for war or natural causes. Veterans are the reason why we're alive. These wonderful veterans are protecting us and we should repay their kindness by honoring the ones who served in the military. There are lots of reasons why veterans should be appreciated. That's why people made this amazing holiday so families and communities can all celebrate. Interesting facts. <laughs> My great grandfather was a chief, retired as a chief master sergeant, and after he retired, he built his own planes in his garage. While he was serving in Arizona, he met his lovely wife, Mary Bell. I remember when my mom and aunt telling me stories about how they'd fly in the planes he built when they were little, flying over their house, waving to my great grandparents. Back then, since there was very few Indians, it was hard to fight against the British Army. The Indians were ruled by the British, so there were very less people to fight. Yet, they still won. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call up Peyton Rice. Hi, I'm Peyton Rice. Um, Veteran Day means to me honoring and thanking the brave, brave men and women who served in the military to protect our country. It's a day to remember their sacrifices and appreciation and for their courage and dedication. Thank you. And last, um, we have Rama Alashara and Lila Mercier. Most people view Veterans Day as a day where they hold an American flag and honor our country, but that's not what Veterans Day is meant for. Veterans Day is a day that we honor people who risked their lives and fought for our country. They didn't do it because it paid extra or made them famous. They protected our country out of the goodness in their heart. 
That's why, to me, Veterans Day has so much more meaning than just holding up an American flag. These are the people who make our home, America, a safe place to live. Not just anyone dedicates their life to protecting people they've never even met. People who do that are the people who hands down deserve a day to celebrate all they have accomplished. Those kinds of people can go to bed every night knowing they had one of the most respectable careers in the world. And that's why once a year we celebrate the brave people who fought for our country, the place we call home. Now when you think of Veterans Day, don't think about waving a flag. Think about the veterans because when you didn't even realize it, they were fighting for you, your home, and your safety. In conclusion, that's why Veterans Day is a day of honor. Um, one other thing that I wanted to um, bring up is um, we have a table set out there for the Thank a Vet program. This is a community-sponsored program that is a thank you to the veterans living in our community. Um, again, it's in the hallway as you exit. Um, if you've signed up in the past, please check in to make sure that um, we have you on the list and that all of your information is current. Uh, deliveries will be on Saturday, November 18th, between the hours of 10 a.m. and noon. If you have any questions, I'll be around for the rest of the day, um, as well as there'll be a couple of JCs out there um, to, to ask questions as well. So, thanks. Once again, the serenading seniors will be performing a selection of patriotic songs for you to enjoy.
we would like to honor the members of our military, both past and present, by singing the song of each branch of service. If you or a loved one has served or is now serving, please stand or raise your hand when we sing their song. The United States Air Force. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, flying high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. Adam boy, give her the gun. Down we dive, spouting a flame from under. Off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame or go down in flame. Nothing will stop the U.S. Air Force. The United States Army. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Part of all we have done till the little battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. Two, three, for wherever you go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. The United States Marine Corps. The halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. We will fight our country's battles on the land and on the sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to bear the titles of the United States Marines. The United States Navy. Anchors away, my boy. Anchors away. Farewell to college days. We sail at break of day, 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 day. Who oh, our last night on shore drink to the foam until we meet once more. Here's wishing you a happy voyage home. The United States Coast Guard. We're always ready for the call. We place a trust in thee. Through serpent storm and howling gale, how will this be? Sampa Paratus is our guide, our claim, our glory too. To fight, to save, or fight, to die, I Coast Guard, we are for you. And the United States Space Force. This is new, you probably have never heard it. <laughs> Where the white and waspful eye, guardians beyond the blue, the invisible front line, white heart is brave and true, holding, reaching out to space. There's no limit to our sky. Standing guard both night and day, we're the Space Force from on high. And now we have a very special thank you song. We would like veterans only, if you can stand or raise your hand, this is a thank you for your service.
Thank you so much, Serenading Seniors. At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome Chairman of the Select Board, Doc Elfman, for his remarks. All right. Thank you, Scott, our veteran services officer. Uh, both Paige Duncan, our uh, acting assistant, uh, acting town manager, and myself were very luckily uh, asked to speak today. Unfortunately, Paige uh, had a death in the family and could not join us, so guys are all just stuck with me. Um, veterans, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, and esteemed members of our community. Today we gather as a cl close-knit community to express our profound appreciation for the courageous individuals who have dedicated their lives to the service of our nation. Veterans Day is a special occasion when we reflect on the immense sacrifices made by our veterans and extend our heartfelt gratitude towards them. On this significant day, we pay homage to the countless Americans who have answered the call to serve, leaving behind their family, friends, and the comforts of home to defend the fundamental principles upon which our great nation was founded. These veterans, regardless of whether they served during times of conflict or peace, have embodied the true value of selflessness, <laughs> honor, and duty. Veteran Day serves as a living testament to the unwavering patriotism and resilience that flows through the veins of our military personnel. It is a day to acknowledge that the liberties we enjoy today have been secured and preserved by the sacrifices of those who have donned the uniform. Yet it is essential to recognize that the commitment of our veterans exists beyond their time in the military. They return to our communities as leaders, mentors, and vital contributors to the tapestry of our community. They bring with them the core values of discipline, teamwork, and resilience, resilience, which is the foundation of our nation's strength. As we stand here today, let us also remember that the journey of a veteran is not always an easy one. Many of them bear the physical and emotional scars of their service. As a united community, it is our responsibility to offer the support and respect they deserve, ensuring that no veteran ever feels neglected or abandoned. On this Veterans Day, I encourage each and every one of us not only to express our gratitude to our veterans, but also to engage them, listen to their stories, and lend a helping hand when needed. Let us keep in mind that the sacrifices made by our veterans were not only for their benefit, but for the freedom and prosper prosperity of all Americans. In closing, Veterans Day is a day of profound gratitude and contemplation. It is a day when we come together as a community to honor those who have safeguarded our way of life. Let us carry the spirit of this day with us throughout the year, remembering that the freedoms we cherish have been earned through their dedication hard work, determination, and determination of our veterans. To all veterans in our midst today, we offer our sincere salute, express our heartfelt thanks, and acknowledge our eternal indebtedness for all of your service. Thank you. Oh, give me one more second. On a side note, we're also here to um, remember our friend uh, Jack Othelat. And I'm just going to share a little story, personal story, about Jack. Um, when I first moved to Foxborough 35 years ago, you know, you stopped picking up the Foxborough reporter. Who didn't know Jack Othelet? But I, I, I met him a few years later at some function, and uh, quite engaging gentleman. You learn a lot with, with, when talking to Jack. Uh, when my late wife and I eventually bought a house on Main Street, it was Jack that came up to me and said, you know, this is a historic home. You should get a plaque for the front of that home. And he talked us through the way that we went through the um, historic commission to, to, to get that plaque. Uh, 
He did a lot of research himself along with the Historic Commission. And on the day we got that plaque and put it up, Jack was there and he presented me with something we all know and probably all have in our uh, libraries, the uh, images of Foxborough written by Jack. And he turned to page 30, which had my house in it. So I was very proud of the fact that not only did Jack write this book about Foxborough, that uh, somehow little aspect of that, our house was in there. And the house at the time was owned by uh, Doc Buckley, and he said he was very proud of the fact that another doctor was using the house as a home office. Well, I kept it on my front desk for years, and over the years it got pretty tattered, uh, the bindings broke, and last year Jack and his daughter were up uh, at, um, up at the uh, town with the uh, farmer's market, and it was a great opportunity for me to uh, buy a new book and update my, my library. And when he was there, he was also selling another book, um, Foxborough, World War II. Those of you that have not read this book, it is truly a phenomenal book about the uh, people we're talking to about today. You know, it's the small World War II portion of it, but it, it's a great book. And in reading the book, I grew up in Sharon, and we had a gym teacher in Sharon, Mr. Hall. And being a baby boomer and cert certainly idolizing oop, uh, World War II vets, um, we heard rumors that Mr. Hall uh, was a Silver Star recipient and a Purple Heart recipient. But as kids, we were fascinated by it, but none of us would dare go up to him and ask him. And in reading the book, what I never realized that Mr. Hall was from Foxborough. And I read his complete story in this book about how he won that Silver Star and Purple Heart in Italy uh, during World War II. So it was kind of a nice circle moment for me, and uh, uh, it, is, it is a great book. We'll all miss Jack. Uh, certainly as a selectman, I'll miss him because we couldn't make any decisions about Uptown without Jack's approval. And we don't know who or where we're going to go to now. Uh, thank you very much, and all of you, thank you for your service. At this time, I'd like to offer, offer Mr. Jay Barros if you would like to come up and say a few words. Thank you, sir. Never miss the opening of an envelope or a picture if you're going to be a politician. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you, Doc. Uh, great words about Jack, and um, thank you to all the veterans here today. In your service and your sacrifice, and thank you to the community of Foxborough, it is truly an honor and a privilege to represent you on Beacon Hill. Um, thank you to the serenading seniors, and Reverend Dudley, can't outdo you. You are amazing, and thank you for your kind words about Jack. Um, thank you to his family for being here today as well. So I'll keep it short. Happy Veterans Day. Again, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Pastor Steve Baker to come uh, to come back. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wrote it down. We didn't uh, we didn't fix it. Uh, I'm about, I was going to ask Bill to come back up and do our benediction. Would you stand for? I know we're a community with many different beliefs, but our church, for instance, has had two prayer requests recently, not just for veterans of the past, but veterans with, connect, not from, but with connections to Foxborough who have been under fire in recent weeks in Iraq. So as we close today, I would suggest perhaps we could join our hearts in a word of prayer for those who are currently serving and are at risk so that we might be free and we might be safe. Heavenly Father, thank you for this program today. 
Thank you for those who have served. Thank you for the honor of a World War II veteran present. Thank you for the courage, the patriotism, the love of community and family that are represented by our veterans here today. But we remember as well those who are currently serving, many of whom at this very moment are in places of danger, one of whom barely avoided a roadside bomb. Grant our fellow citizens, wherever they may be from, protection in these dangerous days and hours, we pray. In your name, amen. amen. Please remain standing. At this time, I'd like to invite the Boy Scout Troop 32 to retire our colors. In closing, I would like to thank the Acting Town Manager, Paige Duncan, the Select Board, State Representative Jay Barrows, thank you, Senator Paul Feeney, the Human Resources, uh, the Human Services Department, Foxborough Police and Fire Department, thank you, Chief Grace, Fox, uh, Foxborough Public Schools, especially central, centralized maintenance and food service for their as assistance in preparing for this event, Mr. Mike Weber, Foxborough Cable Access for the audio visual. The Department of Public Works, all of today's <laughs> presenters and performers, thank you. Especially uh, Bill Dudley for his heartfelt speech, thank you Bill. All of the attendees here today and those from watching from home. Finally, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Jack's family for their attendance. I know that some of you have traveled quite a distance to get here. Thank you very much. As we remember Jack's service, not only to his town, but to his country. Finally, from, from the heart, I would like to say thank you to all of the veterans and dependents who have written that blank check to the United States of America for our freedom. You all are invited uh, to join us after this in the cafeteria for a lunch that was catered uh, by Roach Brothers. And we selected uh, just a great spread um, and we would love for you to join us for that. And um, in closing, I just want to just say thank you to everybody for attending and supporting us, supporting the veterans. God bless you all.